Hello, Microsoft Ignite. Welcome to the Ask the Experts session, Expand VMware Solution Azure with the latest VMware offerings running on the Azure platform. As you know, VMware and Microsoft have worked closely to enhance the ABS platform by certifying additional VMware offerings. Our most recent updates bring ABS into operational parity with your on-premises VMware solutions. In this session, we'll discuss the ABS platform enhancements and feature how VMware SD-WAN optimizes branch to Azure connectivity. Welcome and enjoy the presentation. Let's meet our experts to get started. <clears throat> First of all, I'm your host and moderator for the session, Anthony Wilson, VMware Senior Director and leader of our global ABS Synergy Sales Group. That's the group that brings VMware and Microsoft uh, field resources together to help customers like yourself maximize the benefits of the Azure VMware solution offering. Joining me today are our experts, Joseph Chung, Senior Director of Strategic Partnerships, Steve Pantol, Senior Technical Marketing Architect for ABS, uh, Jeremiah Meggy, Principal Cloud Solutions Architect for ABS, Eric Horschman, our Product Marketing Director, and Tejber Bach, Senior Staff Solution Architect. Welcome experts, are you all there? Go ahead right. and come on, say hello, yeah. just so I make sure, Thanks. make sure the audience Welcome can hear you. Are. Great, great, great. All right, so a couple of housekeeping items, folks. Uh, please come off camera if you're comfortable, show those beautiful smiles to everybody, let's try and connect. Unmute to ask a question and participate in the conversation or feel free to use chat as well. Um, we're going to create a space for everyone to participate. It's a safe zone, right? So feel free to share in your comments. Let us know uh, if there are some questions that are coming up immediately, even as the presenters are going through uh, their uh, presentations of content. Feel free to use the, uh, the chat feature as well as the Q&A feature there. And of course, we always want to be respectful. Uh, there's an event code of contact that is posted to the chat for reference. So remember, this is recorded and in a public domain. So we ask that you be mindful of all of the comments. With that said, let's get started. So, right. Joseph, I'm going to pass it over to you and talk about ABS platform enhancements since the spring Ignite uh, event. It's going to be Steve first, then I'll hand it over to Joseph. But Thanks, Steve. Yes, we've had a ton of exciting updates that have come to the platform since the last Ignite. And I'll run through them very quickly so that we have plenty of time for questions. Um, on the platform and feature enhancement front, um, we've achieved FedRAMP High certification for commercial AVS workloads. Um, we've added a bunch of new Azure regions, um, at, uh, raised scale limits, um, additional hosts, additional clusters supported per private cloud. Um, there are some new storage options in preview, Azure disk pools and Azure network files. Uh, HCX Enterprise Edition is now available at no cost to customers, and that unlocks features like replication assisted vMotion, OS assisted migration, mobility groups, and mobility optimized networking. Uh, we have support for AVS placement policies in preview, and that's a web based front end for managing VM to VM and VM to host affinity and anti affinity rules. Uh, we support AVS run commands, which is a way to allow certain administrative tasks to be run with temporary elevated privileges without involving uh, Azure support. Uh, we support for Azure Monitor for AVS workloads, support for private DNS forwarding and the default creation of a DNS forwarder zone, and preview support for AVS SDC Interconnect, which is a way to peer private cloud objects in the same region. Uh, on the VMware services side, uh, we now support the on-prem and cloud-hosted versions of vRealize Operations, vRealize Network Insight, and vRealize Automation. And um, we've expanded HCX support. So now, in addition to Express Route, HCX migrations are supported over site-to-site -site VPNs and SD-WAN connections, uh, provided certain network underlay requirements are met. Uh, we support Site Recovery Manager now to AVS, and this is available and enabled as an add-on right through the Azure portal. Uh, we support Tanzu Standard, um, allowing for a consistent Kubernetes experience on-prem and across clouds with Tanzu Kubernetes Grid, and a common control plane for multi-cloud, multi-vendor Kubernetes cluster management with Tanzu Mission Control. Tanzu Application Service is also fully supported. For those of you living the CF push dream, TAS can be deployed right on AVS. Uh, NSX Advanced Load Balancer is supported for consistent multi-cloud load balancing configuration and operations experience. And VMware SD-WAN is now a supported connectivity option. And for more on that one, I'll hand it over to Joseph. Yeah, thanks, Steve. And um, it's a pretty big list, so quite a lot of enhancements and new features. Uh, one of which is SD-WAN. I'm very happy to, to be talking about that. But uh, first and foremost is uh, thank you everyone for taking the time to join us. 
and, and really appreciate the opportunity to introduce our SD-WAN and AVIA solution. So it's, it's, it's an exciting time to be in the connectivity space. We've seen more advancements in networking in the past 10 years than in the previous 60. And so these new models, including CBRS, LEO, and of course SD-WAN is changing the way we communicate and interact at work and in our daily lives, especially as we start working from home with this whole hybrid model. And, and really it's about democratizing access to information and providing access to 99% of the GDP. And, and while addressing the change in applications where milliseconds matter. It's opening up opportunities to create new business models and services for the digital divide. And we're seeing those services coming online some of which include things like inferencing, computer vision, digital twins, automation. So what it does is it allows enterprises to really rethink how they deploy and secure access to their applications. Now, what we're doing here from the SD-WAN and AVS side here and the benefits that we provide to our customers are highlighted here on the screen. Uh, sorry, Steve, you can go back. I, I kind of just jumped the gun here, but um, so a couple of benefits here. First is, is ROI, commercials. Um, leveraging the work that we've done with Azure Networking and leveraging SD-WAN with Virtual WAN and Virtual WAN Hub allows our customers to reduce the amount of physical footprint. It's a consolidation of data center to the AVS resources. And so we're leveraging the technologies behind Virtual WAN that provide mid mile connectivity and, and ubiquitous connectivity from various locations. And so it effectively allows you to more efficiently allocate resources in the right locations without you know, effectively breaking the bank. The other component here, as Steve had mentioned, is one of the features is HCX over SD-WAN. And that in itself is pretty interesting and it's pretty exciting. We've gotten a lot of good response from that. Uh, you know, moving those workloads on private NPLS connections can be quite expensive and limiting. And so having the flexibility to run the HCX workloads over SD-WAN uh, really helps save on commercials as well as um, kind of increasing the absorption rate. From an increased performance point of view, there's a couple of nice little uh, tools that we have within SD-WAN that allows us to optimize the workloads. So as you start moving services, that may not be sitting in the data center, expanded services, real-time applications, voice, video, VDI. We have a feature called DMPO. It's our unique proprietary solution that allows us to accelerate real-time traffic. Um, in addition to this, our forward error correction, our remediation functionality, our per packet, per bond, our bonding technology, allows our customers to utilize all bandwidth. So if you have multiple connections, it allows for bonding or trunking of the connections. So you can really use all available connections to provide that service. And then last but not least, of course, is our edge security. So as your users, as the workloads migrate and move around, then the first thing you know that's gonna be topical is gonna be securing access to those workloads. So our SASE solution provides that unique solution with our zero trust functionality, our cloud web security functionality, and provides this multimodal employee experience. So thanks, Steve. Next. Okay, so when we look at the SD-WAN and the networking architecture holistically, we look at kind of the three holy grails, which is increasing uptime, increasing bandwidth, and then reducing costs. So as you can see in the three pillars here, as you look at the, um, the cross cloud functionalities, moving workloads around, getting access from your users wherever they may be on whatever applications and on any device, what we're leveraging is our SD-WAN overlay platform that with our expanded SD-WAN gateway features that allow connectivity for the last mile but then now with our HCX over SD-WAN allows for data center to AVS migration um, seamlessly. Next. And when we get down into the weeds and look at the technology, uh, there's a couple of different ways that we've integrated with uh, the, the Microsoft Azure networking folks. 
Uh, one side is our integration with Microsoft Virtual WAN and Virtual WAN Hub. And so you look at that. And so uh, if it's a branch to AVS connectivity or whether it's HCX to AVS connectivity, we provide that stitching through our, our integration with Azure Networking. At the same time, we've automated these features so that these functionality is in the micro in the Azure marketplace. So you can spin up those services um, through that portal, you know, utilize your credits and all that good stuff. And then the bottom here is also if you have workloads running on top of Express Route, then you can also leverage our SD-WAN functionality to go ahead and provide that. So when you look at the solutions here, uh, one is we simplified the makeup of this architecture so that you can run and generate this using the marketplace and automated scripts. And of course, when you look at from the benefits point of view, the, the HCX over VPN or SD-WAN solution, it provides the end-to-end -end connectivity from your users to those workloads. It's scalable. And so because the overlay, we've decoupled the complexity of managing these resources. And then at the same time is because of our, of our SD-WAN gateway global footprint, it reduces the latency because we're getting the users to the closest location um, using real-time traffic analysis. So in a nutshell, that is an overview of our SD-WAN on AVS, and I'll pass it back to you, Steve. Or Anthony, sorry. Sorry, Anthony, I think you're on, you're on mute. There we go. All right, can you hear me now? <laughs> so thank you very much, Steve and Joseph. So uh, our presence, VMware presence at Ignite um, was meant to get customers like you to get a little bit more granular knowledge on what we're doing, all of the different product enhancements. You can learn a lot more. We have a VMware featured partner page. There's VMware Horizon, so that's going to be your platform for on-premises and Azure desktop virtualization. Also, Azure VMware solution on VMware Tuck Zone. You can follow us at VMware Cloud on Twitter. All of the information is there, so you can see our presence at this uh, year's Ignite conference in the fall session. We appreciate you uh, being here, and now we'll open it up for all questions so you can ask the experts. Oh, let me go to the q and A. I I see that there have already been some questions uh, that were posted in the Q&A, and some of our experts have been answering those. We have a couple of them out there that have not been answered as of yet. Um, this person, the question is, could we leverage this to enhance the team's experience from Windows Virtual Desktop? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, the short answer is yes. We didn't want to get into this uh, bragging mode with what we've done with the Microsoft folks, but from an SD-WAN point of view, um, we have roughly around a dozen solutions, and that includes um, a connectivity with Azure networking through virtual WAN, through virtual WAN hub, route server, um, the zones function of the PMAG, zones for operators, edge zones. We also have a working relationship and a partnership with M365 folks. So we've demonstrated acceleration for uh, WVD, for SharePoint, and for M365 applications holistically. So the answer is, short answer is yes. Great, thank you, Joseph. Another question is, are there conversion utilities to migrate VMware to AVS? Um, customers send us VMware hard drives. So I guess the question was about uh, some utilities that could be used to easily migrate VMware to AVS. Yeah, it's, it's time I don't believe there are any plans for uh, a mechanism for exporting data for transport to an Azure data center and uploading. Um, but we do, there are products that can help facilitate that migration. You have free access to HCX for, for network extension and vMotion and in cold migrations as well. Um, you can also use SRM to facilitate that sort of migration as well. And there are some third party products that can help too. Great. Any other questions, feel free to come off of mute to those in the audience. I see a few more here that I'll tee up. Um, do I need a virtual WAN to connect VMware SD-WAN to AVS? Uh, you don't 
that is one of the options. Uh, you, you can leverage virtual WAN. Uh, you can also leverage Express Route to connect to the AVS resources. Okay, great. Ta -da. Sometimes uh, folks want to know, get some clarity on who sells, supports Azure VMware solution and what VMware technologies are included. Sure, uh, Azure VMware solution is sold by Microsoft. Um, first line support is handled through Microsoft. Um, support for any VMware solution products that are installed on top of AVS would come from VMware. Um, in terms of what's included, you get um, vSphere 6.7 update 3, NSX 3.12 today, uh, HCX 4.1 is installed by default. You can upgrade to 4.2 and, uh, and vSAN. Great. Um, do I need to purchase new VMware licenses or can I bring my own licensing to the AVS platform? Uh, the licenses are included in the node cost. So you buy a certain number of uh, AVS nodes. Right now there's a single node type um, and all of the licensing for all the VMware components is included in that monthly or one year or three year cost. Got it. Is AVS a dedicated solution? Will I be the only customer that's using the infrastructure? Yep, this is v this is vCenter, vSphere SDDC running on dedicated bare metal hardware. You are the only one with access to those nodes. Uh, what about workloads? Can workloads be migrated to Azure without downtime? Yep, we can do that with uh, HCX network extension and uh, vMotion or with uh, Enterprise Edition, the replication assisted vMotion to do bulk migrations with no downtime. Does this solution support Express Route for hybrid connectivity? Absolutely, yes. We generally, generally our enterprise customers will have an Express Route connection to Azure already, and we peer with that via Express Route Global Reach. Now, Steve, what if the customer does not have Express Route? Is that a requirement? Uh, it's not a requirement. Um, it used to be that certain features weren't allowed without Express Route, um, such as HCX support. Um, but uh, we do support. We've always supported site site VPN connectivity for uh, test dev uh, and for limited production POCs. Um, but as of HCX 4.2, we now support migration and all HCX features over site-to-site -site VPNs or SD-WAN, provided certain network underlay requirements are met. And I'll uh, post a link to that minimum underlay requirements doc um, in the chat. Great, now, I understand there are two different consumption modules, uh, models in terms of uh, consuming AVS. Can you talk about those as an on-demand and then there's an, a reserved instance? What can you tell the audience about those? Yeah. Um, by default, uh, it defaults to on-demand billing. It's billed monthly on a per hour uh, at a per hour per host rate, um, but you can also purchase one and three year reservations, and you can purchase those where they're paid up front or you're pay or paid monthly. And assuming there's some type of discounting for the for the reserve re reservation for three years, got it. What automation tools are available? Um, Vrealize Automation is supported um, to do portal-based provisioning to um, AVS. Also, AVS is exposes the vCenter endpoint, so any automation you've written that um, doesn't require root-level permissions to ESXi or administrator permissions to vCenter um, ought to work as is. Um, in cases where you get a default cloud admin user, which does have a not full admin credentials, but it's enough to administer the solution as long as you're not touching host directly. Got it. Um, let's talk about disaster recovery. Do, do we support DR between an on-premise environment and AVS? Uh, yeah, we can do that with SRM. We can also do that with HCX um, DR, and there are a bunch of third-party products that work as well, or that are supported on AVS as well. Um, Zerto support is in preview. Um, I'm blanking on the JET one. <laughs> Someone correct me, but there's another one that's documented on the Azure site that is also supported in preview. Got it. Aside from the um, from the node cost for AVS, what other costs can be expected? Network egress charges, Express Route Global Reach, VMware licensing. Tell us about that. Sure. So there are. It's a public cloud, so there are going to be fees associated with the use of native services. Um, egress traffic back to on-prem Express Route circuits that are outside of AVS, so the one that, that you probably have already that connects your on-prem data center to Azure. We're not going to defer the cost of that. Um, the Express Route gateways that get deployed, any native VMs you deploy for management, um, public IPs. These are just some of the costs that might uh, be incurred. Um, but also it comes down to what you deploy. 
but to deploy AVS, there's really not a lot beyond the node cost necessary. It's just supporting infrastructure to manage that and tie it into your into your on-prem data center. Um, with AVS, you do get Express Route Global Reach for free to connect that to your Express Route connection. So that is one place where we defer a little cost. Got it. So I heard you mention earlier some of the v realized products and versions that are supported on AVS. Were there were there anything new in terms of those products since uh, Spring Ignite that we should uh, tell the audience about? Sure. I think our official announcement of support came after Spring Ignite, um, but as of today, uh, realized Network Insight on prem and cloud, realized Operations Manager on prem and cloud, and realized Automation on prem and cloud are fully supported, fully certified. Um, Log Insight is not yet fully supported. Um, it can work, but there's some issues with pushing syslog stuff, so we don't consider that fully supported yet. Got it. Uh, a lot of our customers as a use case uh, run VDI. And so the question then is, how is Horizon, VMware's uh, VDI solution on AVS, different from Horizon Cloud on Azure? I'm looking for my notes on that one. So yeah, there are the two different flavors for deploying H uh, Horizon. So Horizon on AVS is Horizon deployed just as you would on-prem, but on AVS infrastructure. So you'd follow similar deployment patterns as you would on-prem. Horizon Cloud on Azure is a fully managed offering by Azure. Um, so Horizon on AVS is, is an IaaS model. Horizon Cloud on Azure is closer to a SaaS model. And there's some licensing implications there. Um, Horizon Cloud on Azure um, would benefit from that Windows Virtual Desktop um, benefit um, because it's a managed desktop as a service um, offering. Got it. So uh, sticking with virtual desktops for a second, can customers use the Windows virtual desktop benefit with VMware Horizon on AVS? With Horizon on AVS, no, you would need to use the Horizon Cloud on Azure. Um, the trade off there is is more control over the over the infrastructure if if you consume the IaaS offering, which is Horizon on AVS. Got it. All right. So in terms of uh, who sells and supports the AVS solution, um, and the VMware technology. So is a customer has an issue, their first line and second line of support is going through Microsoft. Is that correct? Yep, they, they open the initial ticket with Microsoft. Um, if the issue is determined to be something um, that is more VMware specific, they have a, a mechanism for interfacing with VMware GSS to get that ticket handed over. All right, so since our session focused a lot on SD-WAN, a couple of questions around VMware SD-WAN. What about support for HCX? Uh, it's supported. <laughs> so <laughs> it's supported but, uh, with regard any particular to, uh, version requirements or, uh, or 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 things that any nuances that the audience should know about. There, there are, but I'm blanking on exactly the which one. Uh, I think it's going to be four dot two, but we can uh, post that into the chat. Okay, great. Yeah, but it's supported uh, by both VMware as well as Microsoft. So the release notes have been have gone out. So. Uh, it's fully supported. And, and exactly how does VMware SD-WAN build connectivity into AT, into AVS? Excuse me. Uh, so if you look at the diagram before, so there's a couple of different models. Um, there's actually three different models. One is the direct connectivity from data center to the AVS resources through uh, route server through Express Route. The other one is from a branch location with an existing uh, VMware SD-WAN uh, component, CP component or a virtual component running uh, and connecting to a virtual edge sitting inside Azure. So that's another model. And then the third model is leveraging our SD-WAN gateway. So our SD-WAN gateways can also connect into Azure to get um, those services plumbed into AVS to get the users accessing AVS resources through the gateway. Got it. Thank you, Joseph. Question, question here around uh, SD-WAN to enhance uh, M365. Yeah, so I touched on that a little bit earlier today. Uh, it, it really falls down to, it comes back to our dynamic multipath optimization. And so that's a unique feature that uh, we had from, from inception. So we've been uh, accelerating voice, video, real-time applications since day one. Uh, with regards to M365 uh, in these latency, high jitter, high packet loss environments, we've seen, we've demonstrated extraordinary performance. 
All right. And so when you have these lossy environments, we can help accelerate that using DMPO. And that also kind of tails back into the consolidation portion. So that if you have, when you when you think about designing your infrastructure, you put your workloads close to the users based on geography, because if you have these network conditions that, that do not allow for you know, a, a very good user experience, and obviously no one's using those services. So they end up deploying their workloads closer to the user, and that means that they have to expand those, those deployment sites. Now, what we do with our DMPO and accelerate that last mile, along with our connectivity into Azure's network or their first mile, it allows us to expand and, and expand the performance, regardless of how close you are or what that network condition looks like. So effectively consolidating the amount of real estate that you need to invest in. So who manages the SD-WAN edges in virtual WAN? So the, um, the virtual edges are running in, in, uh, in Azure through the marketplace. It would be managed by, uh, it would be a Microsoft environment. Right, so the virtual edges will be sitting inside Azure hosted and supported by Microsoft. Um, from the VNF point of view, then it would be managed by our partners, by your partners and VMware. So overall, what use cases does this solution address? So there's a couple of, of different use cases. One is from a user to AVS connectivity point of view, it provides that bridging. Right now, also there's a mid mile functionality. So if you have users sitting in a far off region, then it allows you uh, to connect into the closest Azure region, leverage their backbone, and that's what Azure's virtual WAN hub does, right? And provides that access. Similarly, is securing those workloads. What we've done is We've deployed our SASE, our VMware SASE platform around the world so that if users have to get access to those resources securely, then we can provide those, those security mechanisms like the VPN or, or what we call our DMPO tunnel. So securing that transmission at the same time, providing zero trust at the same time, providing cloud web security functionality, and then soon to be is going to be our, our firewall functionality. So, and it's not all or nothing, you can pick and choose, but effectively securing those workloads. So whether you're in your home, your branch, uh, your data center, you know, in Starbucks, whatnot. So providing that connectivity and securing that connectivity, as well as connecting users through Microsoft's backbone so that again, you can, you can provide an SLA to those applications without um, without having to explore MPLS and private connectivity. Great, thank you. A couple more questions have uh, popped up in the chat and I see some of them are being, uh, being answered um, by our experts here. There's a question here from Carl that says, on the MSI Ignite connectivity between Azure Stack, HCI and VMware, uh, has that been announced? Can do we have any highlights or insights on that? Azure Stack, HCI, and VMware connectivity. Yeah, it, that is a late breaking announcement. Um, those of us on the call were likely not privy to it, so we will need to research that and see what that means for AVS. Got it. And then uh, Arian has a question about allowing us to define a 0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 route in AVS on the roadmap. I'm not aware of that being on the roadmap, but I, I wouldn't necessarily be. Um, if that is a feature you need, we would encourage you to bring that up with your your Microsoft reps. That is the quickest way to get attention to that feature request. Um, but we can do some digging on that as well. Okay, great. Hey, Anthony, there's one question that popped up as to uh, when uh, AVS would be on GovCloud. Yeah, so uh, I actually have been doing some work with the uh, Azure engineering team that's responsible for uh, Azure Government Cloud. And that is still on the roadmap. There was a private preview that was set to kick off in the December, January timeframe. Uh, I haven't heard anything different about that. So there should be that private preview that's happening. Your Azure uh, sales specialist would have information on a uh, specific uh, criteria to become part of that private preview for Azure government. Yeah, and just um, 
uh, from the SD WAN side, we we are just uh, we're listed on the Azure Gov Cloud Marketplace. So I uh, wanted to just go and plug that in. Great. Okay, I think we are at the uh, the top of the hour uh, for our session. Were there any other questions that we wanted to take a chance to uh, answer before we let the audience go? Once, twice, okay. Thanks everyone for your time. Thanks for participating. Thank you to our experts for all the knowledge that you shared with the audience. Customers, we appreciate your business. We thank you for trusting two of the world's largest software companies with this uh, public cloud solution, Azure VMware solution. Thank you, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you everybody.